Welcome to episode 158 of Level Up Your Career with APMG. <clears throat> Welcome to 60 Minutes of Live Q&A, where your questions drive the show. My name is Stefan Brendel, and on behalf of APMG, I am your host today. My colleagues Adriana and Ella are in the LinkedIn and YouTube chat, so please let us know your name and the city from where you join in. They will post a link for you to vote up the questions that you would most like answered, and of course for you to add your own question. If your question is selected, your name will appear in the credits at the end of the show. So get yours in early and stay with us to see that happen. Today we're talking about leadership, and in particular, how to become and remain authentic in leadership positions. Now, whether your primary job role is to be a leader, or if you are informally called upon for these skills, keeping honest about who we are and true to our values is a key element of sustainable, approachable leadership. Joining us today are a panel who work across industries and time zones. So let's jump in and meet them. Hello, panel. There we are. <clears throat> I start I start with uh, being a polite person, start with the ladies. Um, and I start with Malini Yaya Janes. He, she's a highly experienced business relationship manager who specializes in nurturing high-performing BRMs and teams. She's joining us from Melbourne, Victoria today. As a regular keynote speaker, she brings her authentic self to every situation and is a huge inspiration to all of us. Welcome back to Level Up, Malini. Thank you, Stefan. I'm so excited to be part of this uh, uh, conversation. Uh, I think it's high time we, we challenged the, the conventional and stereotypes about um, who a leadership uh, is or, or what leadership is and uh, you know what, uh, who makes a good leader. So I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation. Yes, sure will be. Thanks, Malini. Um, also with us is Johan Bota. He's the CEO of Get It Right, uh, is a long, lifelong lean advocate who has built a career on helping organizations change for the better. Specializing in building digital age capability, Johan describes himself as a digital change provocateur. Johan is joining us from Johannesburg in South Africa. Welcome back, Johan. Hello, Stefan and everybody. Nice to be back. Looking forward to the conversation. Right. Great. Also with us is Laurie Borman. His career has spent management and leadership roles in complex multidiscipline engineering and construction projects. Now responsible for project portfolio planning and control at Synchrony Projects in Brisbane, Queensland, Laurie knows firsthand the talent inclusivity can tap into for teams and organizations. Hello, Laurie. Hello, Stefan. Very good to be here again. So welcome, fellow panelists, and welcome, listeners. Yeah, <laughs> right. Thank you. Also with us is Tomasz Manugiewicz. He's the general manager of Grand Parade in Poland. An engineer at heart, a speaker by passion. He has delivered speeches at the largest European IT conferences, also keynote speaker. Thomas has been in the IT sector since 2006. He started as an engineering manager and later on helped to create the first Polish online banking system. He has been working for international global corporations and also a book author. Witam Tomasz. <laughs> Hello, uh, Stefan and everyone. It's uh, very nice to hear you. Um, yes, the topic of our city is uh, very close to my heart, so I'm looking forward for this uh, conversation and uh, I would uh, count on inspiring, inspiring um, time. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Tomas. Completing our panel is Mart Rovers. The president of Interprom, where in the US and in Europe, they strive to really listen to their clients and help them adopt leading practice across a range of disciplines. 
Mart has a passion for building communities, something he shares with many of our panel today, and has been the architect of successful service management communities. Welcome back, Mart. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, APMG, for having me again. Uh, welcome to uh, all the viewers, listeners. I can't wait for the questions. The ones that have come in are looking really promising. And I'd like to start off to set the tone a little bit with a quote from uh, Michael Holland, the founder and president of Bishop House, who said, authentic leadership is revealed in the alignment of what you think, what you say, and what you do. All right, thanks. Well, everybody who's been on Level Up knows Mart always comes up with the quote, so thanks for that. And um, <clears throat> as you can't wait, uh, my question master for today is uh, Suchitra Jacob, who's joining us from the city of Bangalore in India. Now, it, um, as it might be that Suchitra currently has a connection problem. So I think um, I start with the first question, if that's okay. <clears throat> um, and the first question is from Paul. Good one to start with, I think, is how do you develop authenticity? And I see Malini wants to start us off and then uh, Johan and then Laurie. Thank you, Stefan, uh, and thank you, Paul, for for starting us off with with such a such a loaded question. Uh, so, I think in order to develop authenticity, first you have to actually understand what is authenticity, uh, and I, I I suspect we will probably explore that more um, over the course of this hour. Right. So. Um, I think the next thing, once you actually understand what is authenticity, is to actually cultivate really good self-esteem, because that is often one of the reasons why we um, shy away from being authentic, right? That we don't believe in ourselves, or we lack confidence, or we think that there might be some uh, consequences, um, you know, whether it's perceived or real uh, consequences to showing up uh, as our authentic self. So, if you if you develop really good a uh, really healthy self-esteem and self-confidence, then that's a key step towards showing up in a more authentic manner. Now, some of the things that you can do to develop self-esteem is to um, is to gain a better understanding of what your strengths are. Uh, you know, taking courage from your achievements, uh, and also understanding where you might have some internal negative. Uh, thought patterns, right, that you actually need to, to get rid of. Um, and so this, you can actually, you can write a whole book about it and we would only scratch the surface. I'm looking forward to the rest of this conversation. All right. Thanks, Malini. Well then, Johan, what, would you like to add something? I, I would agree with, with uh, uh, Charlie, Malini um, with um, the issue of, of having confidence. But for me, the starting point is actually knowing yourself. Um, I think it's a Delphian maxim, know uh, thyself. Um, and you, you don't get to know yourself if you don't go and explore. So take some time, understand who you are, um, understand yourself what makes you tick, um, and understand how that con can contribute to society as a well. whole. Um, so that would be a starting point for me. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, then, Laurie, please, your view. Uh, I, I agree completely with, with Johan. So it really is about um, understanding yourself um, and really deeply, and the, the better you understand yourself, the more authentic you can be. Um, there's a number of... Um, techniques that um, certainly I've personally found helpful and a lot of people find helpful. For example, um, meditation, where you're effectively blocking out all of the noise from the external world and leaving yourself to your own devices. And, and naturally, a natural consequence of that is that you understand yourself more deeply um, and hence more likely to be your authentic self. So uh, great question. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's uh, developing authenticity, being authentic, very good one. Um, I think the next one is Mart Rovers, who wants to add his view. Yes, I'm going to use uh, some advice that was uh, given by um, a person who's quite 
uh, strong in this field. That's uh, Dr. Chiki Davis, who actually d d uh, wrote an article once to develop uh, authenticity, 20 ways to become a more authentic person. And I won't read all 20, but a few that stand out are definitely already in line with what uh, previous panelists have already mentioned. But one that stood out for me was uh, particularly that said to, uh, to develop the courage to face your fears. And I mean, it's not a surprise that we all, you know, are, have our fears that we're, we're wired that way uh, in, as human beings that we uh, have fears, um, but have the courage to face them. Um, in other words, to be able to deal with them, to be in control of them, to not uh, have them take over uh, as far as who you are and, and who you become. I think it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a very important step, which then may also allow you then to become somebody who can explore values. What are your values, right? Are you this, uh, uh, this person of integrity uh, with ethics, for example? And, and last but not least, uh, you know, find your life purpose. Once you've found your purpose, your personal purpose, um, that's, I think, an enormous, a powerful compass, in essence, uh, to be authentic and, uh, and be yourself. Okay, thanks, Mart. <clears throat> yeah, what a, what a great question to start with uh, on this show. Um, <clears throat> I think we have a new question master now. And um, I want to welcome Shanice Mitchell-Cox, who joins us from Wales. She's stepping in for Suchitra. What a great team APMG has to make that happen. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Shanice. Hi, Stefan. Hi, panel. How is everyone today? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Great work, APMG. Just, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you step right in, Shanice, and come up with the next question? <laughs> Thanks so much, Stefan. So we do have a question from Sarah. What are some barriers to authentic leadership and how can these be addressed? Okay, I think Laurie wants to start us off and then it's um, Johan, Mart and Malini. Uh, well, it, it, um, I guess for, for, for a person to be authentic, it, it really comes down to un someone deeply understanding themselves as we touched on earlier on, but to enable authentic leadership in others, um, sort of building off what Mart said in the last question, it's about taking away people's fear so that people can show up as their authentic self. Um, so this means, you know, trying to create an environment that's very inclusive and very welcoming of people from diverse backgrounds um, in so many ways. So as much as possible as we can encourage diversity and have an inclusive approach, by doing that, we enable others to practice their authentic or be their authentic selves um, and, and become authentic leaders as well. Thank you very much, Laurie. And Johan, your view, please. Yeah, I agree with Laurie, but I think one also needs to think about it from your own perspective. Um, if, if you are afraid to expose yourself or that you will be exposed um, when you when you're genuine, when you're authentic, um, that's a big stumbling block. So yeah, giving yourself permission to be who you are is just as important and, and, and not be afraid to be who you are. So fear is a terrible thing. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Well, Bart, what's your view? I'd like to add two uh, answers to this. That's the... Um, the fact of uh, making telling the truth a habit that sounds like so basic but <laughs> uh but it's enorm enormously important and the other one maybe and and uh to add to that is um when when it's about making statements and decisions you know do that consciously no, don't rush and then having to backtrack or uh, you know, say something as a, oops, I didn't mean it like that, or a decision where you didn't have all the information that you could have had if you would have only taken a little bit more time. In other words, hmm. um, that doesn't help your authenticity. So do things consciously. All right, good, good advice here. Well, Malini, what, what would you like to add or contradict? <laughs> <laughs> 
I uh, well, I agree with with uh, you know everything that has been said so far. But I'd just like to build on, uh, you know, on the point that Laurie made so beautifully about uh, inclusive um, working conditions, right? Uh, because that is often for 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 uh, you know for uh, women and uh, groups that are you know or cohorts that are marginalized. That is often the biggest barrier. Um, to showing up as as our authentic selves, because we are often um, we often feel uh, compelled to sort of edit ourselves because it's unsafe or the you know what is um, encouraged in the or- in the organization uh, in the name of leadership might only conform to one particular style of leadership, but that kind of becomes the the template that everyone is biased. Towards, so while it is very well, uh, you know, to be self-aware and to have courage and so on, um, we still might not feel uh, safe to show up as our authentic selves. And this is why I said, um, you know, we re- we need to uh, cultivate really healthy self-esteem, right? Uh, but we and part of that is also uh, understanding what is it that we need to ask for. Um, you know, from from people around us, whether it's our, um, you know, it's our management or our peers, uh, et cetera. What is it that we need, um, you know, that's in, in our organization that is going to make us more comfortable with being authentic, right? Uh, and so I think uh, this topic of authentic leadership, it's not just, um, it's not just something that's limited to ourselves, as you, you know, as you know, it takes two hands to clap. So if you want to show up as an authentic leader, uh, it's also about the organization creating conditions and supporting you to be that way. So learn to uh, identify what you need and to ask for that in an assertive manner. Good advice coming up here from the panel. Thanks. Um, Tomas, I'd like to hear from you. (laughs) Yeah. So um, we talked about the fear. Uh, a lot and uh, this is i would like to echo on that because this is the basically um fear of rejection right that if we will show our true selves at work or in the group they may not accept us so we may be rejected we may not belong uh, to the group so this is the first very first barrier we need to be courage to break this barrier of fear and say yes i I have a fear, but I will show up as, as I truly are. This is also the the um, the difficulties for the diversity aspect. Uh, people don't uh, share what who they really are because they they they, they fear uh, that they will be rejected. Um, the other um, the other aspect is the feedback, right? Because um, we can be um, we can show our true selves. We can be. We can have a courage to show ourselves, but then we don't see. We have this blind spot and don't see how our environment perceives us. So uh, I would advise uh, the next uh, thing to look for the feedback from the peers, from the colleagues, from people around us, saying, "Hey, do you really trust me? Do I um, do I show up as a true uh, myself in, at work?" For example. Uh, so this is this kind of barrier, and the third barrier, which is more from the organization point of view, uh, we need to um, provide the good working environment for people to show up. So we don't need, we don't want to blame people for their um, bad decisions because that's the learning curve that they they are in, and um, that's our job as a leadership of the companies to provide people such a good condition to uh, to be brave be brave yeah thank you thanks thomas um yes this is a lot uh, today on authenticity more than on the term leader and i think that is good we i think we have a lot of um, of live viewers at the moment and i want to encourage you to give us additional challenges with your questions so we have suliat joining us from <coughs> Nigeria. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And there's Donald from also from Nigeria, uh, which is great. Great. And um, 
Idara is from Nigeria. We have a big, big fan group in Nigeria, I think. Um, <clears throat> and there is Gwen from Surrey here. Hello, Gwen. So lots happening in the chat. Just be very active, engage with us. Yeah. So Hila is uh, joining us from Iran. Hello. Uh, great to see you. And, uh, and from Mallorca in Spain. What a great island, by the way, uh, to be on. And um, Mario, I hope you enjoy the show. You are in good company with a lot of other live viewers here, and um, we have we have quite a lot of questions. But like I said earlier, if you guys out there, if you add your question, that gets a priority for us uh, to be handled by the panel. So don't hesitate and uh, give us your question. Shanice, I think we can um, continue with the next one that we have on the list. Thanks, Stefan. So we've got a question from Ruth. How important is self-understanding and emotional intelligence in being an authentic leader? So I think, Johan, you want to start us off. Is that correct? Should, should I be short again? Very. <laughs> 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 you, you've got, remember, authenticity, another word for that is being real. Yeah. Um, and, and if you don't understand who you are, um, you're going to try and project to the world who you think the world wants you to be. Um, and the moment you do that, you're being dishonest. And people pick on up on dishonesty, especially people who uh, report to you, pick up on that dishonesty so quickly. Um, and then it's hard work to gain that trust again. Yeah. I agree. Absolutely. So, so if people will appreciate the mistakes you make and appreciate the honesty, which makes you authentic. Right. So let's hear from Malini. Uh, Ruth, what a lovely question. And, and I love the way you've put uh, self-understanding and emotional intelligence uh, in the same question, because uh, they are actually joined so closely at the hip. Uh, so, uh, as as Johan said, if 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 you don't understand yourself, how will you know what is your authentic self, and and how will you actually be able to uh, uh, ascertain? Are you showing up, you know, in a way that is true to true to your, um, you know, your your core beliefs and 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 values, right? Um, Emotional intelligence is important, I think, in 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 at least two ways. The first way is. Uh, as an authentic leader, you need to understand what your um, emotional triggers are. Uh, you need to be able to um, manage them. You know, so uh, under un even under challenging circumstances, you need to be able to, um, you know, to to respond to those triggers uh, and ensure that uh, you know you're you're acting in a way that is actually uh, authentic, right? Not just you know, in a way that's more conditioned by the context rather than your core beliefs. But I think the other way that emotional intelligence is really critical for authentic leadership is that um, we often use, we often hear people using the words truth and honesty when we talk about authenticity, right? And that leads to, sometimes can lead to a misconception that being um, that in order to be authentic, we always have to be brutally honest. So we do need to be truthful and we need to be honest, but we don't, we have to take care not to be brutally so. So I think authentic leaders actually have really high emotional intelligence. Uh, they have great empathy. They're able to understand, um, you know, how um, the words they choose to use and, you know, the way they say it when they say it, et cetera, what impact it might have on, on um, the listener. And they're able to communicate in a way that is both honest and kind and compassionate. That leads to better outcomes for everyone. So I think emotional intelligence uh, is really critical to authentic leadership. Thanks, Malini. And let's hear from Tomas. Yeah, Malini uh, mentioned about knowing ourselves, right? Because if we don't know ourselves, how can 
we let other people to know us uh, through authentic us. So that's definitely, definitely important. And um, when we are talking about authenticity, we are talking about building the trust. People need to trust us and say, hey, I trust this guy. He or she is authentic. And from trust perspective, uh, I did a little bit of uh, reading about that because um, this is the topic that I uh, usually do on, on the conferences and just wanted to uh, share with you uh, very quickly that trust is composite, composite from two pillars, cognitive aspect of trust and the emotional aspect of trust. And the cognitive aspect of trust is this, this that we know and understand in the companies like delivering results. For example, I'm from IT, so the skill set, the knowledge, the experience of developing software, it's out there. We all love to develop software. So we build a trust with our peers and managers saying, hey, I will deliver this part of the code. I will deliver something. And they see our results. So that's one, one part being an authentic to deliver what we've promised. And the other part is this emotional uh, intelligence or emotional aspect that we we discussed this is this is transmitted through feeling so um how people feel if they are with us if they feel that they, we are open and honest or if the uh, if the if they don't trust us uh, basically if they feel that we are open honest we uh, have good intentions we can say uh, that we are in the integrity so this emotional intelligence and emotional aspect is very, very uh, important um, in building relationship, building trust, and then being authentic leaders. Thanks, Thomas. <clears throat> and let's hear from Mart. Yeah, just to build quickly on what uh, Thomas just mentioned, indeed, the uh, relationship aspect uh, from emotional intelligence, earning that trust, indeed. I'd like to add and, and use a word that has been mentioned, uh, and maybe not directly, is that self-awareness. In other words, are you self-aware? And you know, I would say practice it by observing yourself, as in if you're in a conversation and a self-awareness then means listen to your, to, to your inner feelings, as in how am I responding to this comment or this, this feedback that I just got or this, this uh, remark that was just made by somebody? Does my heart rate go up? Am I getting warmer? Is my face turning red? Um, am I getting restless? Um, I mean, those are things to, you know, that count and, and should be included in this, this conversation as far as uh, being authentic. Since if you're not paying attention to these things and you let your emotions go, uh, uh, away in essence, have, have that to take over. Um, you know, you, you may portray as in one way, but you say something else and that may uh, contradict each other. So I'd like to add that to the conversation. Thanks. And I would uh, like to add just, just the fact that sometimes it's a, it's a, it's culturally dependent on how you perceive someone being authentic. And uh, I, I see you guys, you're nodding your head, so you know what I'm talking about. So that is something I always have to keep in mind and maybe read between the lines. Somebody can completely be authentic, but just not perceived from a person on the other end of the world, for example. <clears throat> so we have, our, again, our live viewers here, and I from Hello Doreen, uh, from Botswana, uh, our, our African fan club. That's great, great to hear. Uh, and from New Zealand, so live viewers all across the world. And I think, Chinese, if I'm right, we also have the first live question from we our do, live Steph. viewers. We do, yes. So um, we have a question from Sahila. As an authentic leader, how can we establish constructive relationships with different people, cross-functional teams, for inviting them for better cooperation? Okay, that is a good question and a tough one. And I think Thomas wants to kick us off and then Malini, please. Yeah, uh, this is for, for me, this is one aspect. The most important is listening. So if you will listen to different people from different departments, you will hear what their pain points are, what they are, what, what's important for them. And then you will, you will be able to solve uh, your problems or to help them. Okay, thanks. Malini, 
Would you like to add something? <laughs> Uh, Sahila, uh, thank you for joining us from from Iran. Um, we actually have, uh, you know, business relationship management uh, courses that specifically are about all about how do we establish constructive relationships with with people, you know, uh, across organizations, uh, including cross functional ones. So, um, you know, so do look up the APMG um, website for more information about that. Uh, one of the things uh, I think. Uh, is really important when you're bringing together people that have different perspectives of the organization uh, and, and the work that is done. It's actually identifying uh, a common purpose and rallying around that, that shared purpose, um, you know, because that is what uh, inspires us and motivates us. And, and often what, what we find in, in reality is that um, you know, when, when organizations are very siloed and people come, um, you know, with these strong functional perspectives, they only have, um, uh, you know, a, a blinkered view of what the organization's purpose actually is, right? And, and so um, it's, it's really important that everybody understands what the bigger picture is and what their role is, um, you know, in, in, in that space. All right. Thanks, Malini. Um, and let's hear from Laurie then. <laughs> I don't have much to add um, from what uh, Malini said. I think um, they're making that very clear intention and purpose behind the group um, and also making it very clear that it's completely normal for groups from different silos, different functions to have different perspectives in a different context um, towards solving any sort of problem and letting it be known that, that differences are welcome and, and part of the purpose is to explore explore those differences and, and bridge the gaps. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Laurie. We move on with uh, Leohan. Uh, Laurie, that's the danger of putting up your, your hand last time. So <laughs> I think everything has been said, except maybe uh, listening is, is the most important thing, but that also means giving somebody a voice. Yeah. Um, you can't listen to somebody who doesn't talk. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah, good one. And then we have Mart. Um, I think he wants to add something. Just one uh, minor uh, addition indeed. It's uh, something that I picked up from an article from uh, Lynn Christian, how to uh, be your authentic self, self powerful, sorry, seven powerful strategies to be true. And she talks about uh, allowing yourself to be vulnerable and open harder. So definitely when you're in dealing with these cross-functional team uh, aspects, angles, you know, uh, be open hearted, be open minded. Uh, you may end up with uh, many different opinions and who knows, even feelings or in other words, uh, just be open minded, be open hearted. Okay. Thank you. Good advice coming here from the panel. Thanks for that. And let's move on, Shanice. Thanks, Stefan. So we have a question from Beverly. Is it likely a task-orientated leader may not be as authentic in their leadership as a people-orientated leader? Well, what a, what a great question. And Johan will start us off here. Now, I, I, I don't think that you should draw a distinction between your leadership styles. Um, I think in any leadership style, you can be a authentic leader. Um, you know, don't pretend, don't try and be who you are not. Um, be genuine. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And then let's hear from Tomas. Exactly. That's the most important part, to be who you really are. If you are uh, task-oriented, be task-oriented. People will see that you are. Uh, and as we spoke about, you know, listening to the people and giving the uh, the time for people to speak, speak up. If you are a task-oriented person, task-oriented leader, you may want to um, give them the space. So even though you are focused on tasks, and you show that that you are focused on task and that they they can feel that. But at the same time, let's try to move a little bit for this uh, 
consciously for this people aspect, right? So giving uh, the time for people to speak up and listening to them. And then when, once they, they will hear, they will see that you are interested in them, even though you are a task-oriented leader, they will trust you. Thanks, Tomasz. <clears throat> yeah, and I think that's been brought up with listening. Do we really know how to listen? We always think we do, but it's more than than just uh, open open the ears. Um, thanks, Pamela. Um, <clears throat> and I think, Shanice, we have another live question. Is that correct? We do, Stefan. Thank you. Uh, we've got a question from Danielle. Do executives need a standing board, someone who mirrors you on a regular basis? Because we all have our blind spots. Yeah, so I, I saw Malini raising her hand immediately. So please start us off, <laughs> and then Johan. And and hello, Daniel. Uh, I know you are um, often a, a panelist on Level Up, so it's great to have a question from you. Uh, and the short answer is that yes, um, you know, executives, especially, I think need need a sounding board um, and as you've rightly said you know we all have our blind spots so uh, executives who um, tend to you know have more influence in organizations must have more awareness about their blind spots and uh, actively work to uh, to address um, address them I actually the one thing that I I will focus on is um, you know, the reference to someone who will mirror you on a regular basis, I think it actually is helpful to have a number of people um, who who you use as a sounding board. Sometimes people just have a single coach or a single mentor, and it's it's actually helpful to have a diverse range of people that, that you might use for that purpose because different people will bring different perspectives. And I know one of the things that Danielle is very particular, is very passionate about is reverse mentoring. So you you might use someone as a sounding board who's actually at a lower position in the organization to you. Um, and uh, you'll actually learn a lot about your own leadership style based on, on, you know, how they experience your leadership. So please consider having a diverse range of people who, um, who act as your uh, mirror on a regular basis. Thanks, Malini, um, for your advice and uh, your answer to Danielle's question. And uh, Thomas, you would like to add something? Um, yes, yes. The uh, first things first, very um, important question that you asked to Danielle. Uh, I really, uh, I'm really happy to, to hear that. And uh, from my perspective, what executives need, they need someone to ch uh, who challenge their opinion uh, and who will tell, hey, you made this and that decision, but that was actually a wrong decision from the perspective of the people you lead. And why, I'm, why it's so important for me? Because when you are on these top positions, people tend to say yes for everything you do. And that's the uh, blind spot that you don't see, because obviously they don't want to uh, disturb your plans, that they, want, they don't want to show that they are against you but at the same time executives really really are looking forward to have the different opinion so that's important to have those people uh, and also to uh, for those people to be brave authentic and say hey sometimes there are not popular uh, things that, that you need to be aware of mm, thanks thomas yeah Johan, uh, sorry, I missed you in the first place, please. No, uh, don't, don't sweat it. Uh, we quite often say that it's lonely at the top, but I think that loneliness is a choice. Um, it's because we uh, may be feeling a little bit unsure about ourselves. And um, so, yes, really important. Um, and I also think that, that having... Uh, feedback from people across the organization is really important. But maybe for a start, go and select or choose somebody that you really trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> good point. Good point. Thanks. And uh, Laurie, let's hear from you. Well, I agree with everything you know, that the panelists have said. I think one simple way to, to uh, I guess, think about this is that authentic leadership really involves vulnerability. It's um, Leaders don't have to be that old-fashioned hero who can solve any problem or come up with a, 
an answer to any question. But by being vulnerable, we accept that we don't have all the answers and, and that it's a good, healthy thing, um, you know, to have a sounding board or many sounding boards, uh, as Malini suggested, so that we can just make sure we've covered off all perspectives. Nobody knows everything, right? So. Yeah, very true, very true. And Mart, your view, please. <laughs> One way to um, become this authentic leader is to observe yourself objectively. And if you just go off on your own opinions, that may not be always too objective. So definitely uh, find that coach or find these, uh, these sounding boards um, to be and, and uh, maintain that objectivity. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, panel. Thanks, Danielle, for your question. Um, and I'm very glad to see all that engagement from our live viewers because I think we have another live question. Is that correct, Shanice? That's correct. You've got them flying in this morning. Um, <laughs> so we do have a quick question from Let Us Well See. Do you think company culture and policies somehow affect or contribute either positively or negatively to one's being authentic somehow? Well, there you go. This is the question where the cultural uh, differences come in. And Laurie, please start, uh, kick us off here. <laughs> well, I guess this one comes back to the, the point we touched on earlier, which is creating psychological safety for everybody, being inclusive and making it really clear just to take away that fear for people, particularly, um, you know, if... Um, uh, or it's uh, we've got people from different backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, and things like that. So to be mindful of that, to um, consider um, tools like Hofstede's cultural index when we're communicating, you know, across international boundaries and things like that, to understand that you know everybody ticks in a different way, and we need to be open-minded and welcoming of that. Oh, thanks, uh, Laurie and Malini. Please add. Uh. Let's, uh, well, well, let's see. I hope I've pronounced your, your name uh, correctly. Um, I think Laurie actually uh, made a great point that it's not just company culture and policy. It, it's often um, also broader societal culture, right? And he referred to Hofstede, Hofstede's uh, cultural index, which is also my go-to tool, um, you know, for, for cross-cultural um, matters. I think one of the things that... Um, at least this is based on my own experience, right? One of the ways in which uh, company uh, policies can be limiting is because of who's involved in actually constructing those policies. And they might have, uh, again, a, a very, um, uh, you know, biased perception, um, you know, about who's in the organization or what leadership is and so on. So I think when it comes to uh, changing culture or evolving culture, um, that act of creating policy itself needs to be, um, you know, quite in, done in a very inclusive manner right? if we want to have a, a, a more positive outcome. So think about ways in which uh, you demonstrate your authenticity uh, as a leader by um, getting involved in, in um, the development organizational perspectives and bringing people from diverse perspectives uh, into that conversation. Thank you very much, Malini. And let's hear from Johan. Uh, policy is one of my rants in organizations. Unfortunately, there's so much policy left in organizations that were developed 10, 15, 20 years ago. And they, they still sit in the books. And they're completely inappropriate for the current context. So, you know, everybody says you have to review your policies on an annual basis, but the the problem with that is that unless you have the context for the need for the policy, um, you can't properly review it. So I would encourage organizations to actively start looking at their, their organizational policies and asking themselves, is this appropriate, not only for the risk that we're trying to address or whatever, but is it appropriate in the current cultural context? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good one. Um, and Mart, let's have your view, please. I'd like to uh, go off of something that uh, the 
Business Relationship Management Institute, the BRM Institute has put forward um, where it talks, they talk about culture, for example, how important that is for an organization uh, to build great relationships. What they put on top of that actually is purpose, organizational purpose, people's purpose, and make that the North Star that you as an organization go for, you as an individual go for, and of course, uh, be true to that, uh, stay authentic to that. And then once the culture then is in line with that, also your policy should be in line uh, with that. In other words, they all should point in the right direction per uh, Johan's point earlier. In other words, um, they should not conflict uh, with each other. And uh, yeah, the danger is there that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So the yeah, short answer to the question is absolutely yes. So be mindful. Okay, yeah, be mindful. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, panel. And uh, we move on because uh, there's really much engagement uh, on our social channels today, Chinese. Right. There is. There's lots today. Yeah. So we've got another question from Sahila. When it comes to acting as an authentic leader, it's important to practice unbiased processing. How can we deal with it to improve ourselves in this area? Yeah. How can we deal with it? Uh, let's start with Tomas, then Laurie, and then Malini. I'm really happy to hear uh, that you asked about biases. Because biases is actually what drives us away of being authentic. So first things first, we need to understand the biases and know that there are biases uh, that that we can fall into. So education piece is, is really important. And once you have your leadership, people um, knows about biases, then they need to or we need to reflect which of the biases are um, uh, for me, which I have the tendency to fall into. And then uh, what I usually do, I found uh, uh, my accountability partner, let's, let's put it that way, and I tell him or her, hey, this is the biases that I have. Could you tell me every time you will see that I fall into this trap? So then I can make it conscious and make something and change something. Thanks, uh, Tomas. And then let's hear from Laurie. Uh, this is a great question. Thank you for asking it, Sahila. Um, I think the first thing is um, raising awareness of it and accepting that it's completely natural and normal for us to be biased. It's a part of being a human. And um, then there's a number of things we can do. So bias training to raise awareness so that we can all be more mindful of the decisions we're making. And I um, had a very interesting workshop last week with a very progressive um, engineering company that had um, had executive support for um, what they called safe word. And what that meant was that if they were ever in a meeting or in a scenario or any sort of decision-making process where somebody felt like something wasn't quite right or that there was a undue bias happening, whether it was con conscious or unconscious, they could use this safe word which created a safe environment for people to then explore what was going on uh, to understand it better. So there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of really positive practices that are starting to happen in the, wor in the world and a, a, great, a much greater awareness um, that we, we do have these biases. It's natural, but the, great, the more we're aware of it, the more we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Um, so let's hear from uh, Malini then. Uh, Sohila, uh, I actually agree with everything uh, you know that the other panelists have said, and what I'd also like to like to add is that um, you know I think it's important to understand how biases actually come about, and sometimes you know things have been done in a certain way in organizations, or there's uh, people conform to group thinking, right? So one of the ways to to break um, you know, these kind of biased patterns uh, is to actually stop and and ask ourselves, um, you know, both uh, individually and also when we are with groups of people, uh, how else should we be looking at the matter at hand? Who else should we um, get, get an opinion from? How can we reframe, um, you know, what we're discussing um, in, in different ways? And that will often help to break break through some of these uh, mental templates that we have, which we refer to as bias. 
All right. Thank you, Malini. Thank you, panel. And we have time for one more question, uh, Shanice, if we could please um, hear that. <laughs> of course. Thanks, uh, Stefan. So we've got a question from Rupesh. Can we connect with the team by building personal connections? Will you be able to drive performance once you connect at a personal level? Oh, yeah. Johan, will start us off and please um, short answers. Yeah. Thanks. So... <laughs> People tend to think that if you if you um, if you're vulnerable, um, that it contradicts the issue of performance, and, and that's not true. One of the things that SEAL teams, for instance, learn first is to be honest with each other, to be vulnerable, to build trust. Otherwise, they cannot perform. Mm, thank you, and uh, let's hear from Malini then. Uh, Rupesh, I think it's absolutely important to build uh, personal connections, right, within within a team. And as uh, Johan said, uh, that's one of the ways in which you um, you know you 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 build trust, and and uh, also you can um, uh, you can feel more comfortable about showing up as your authentic self. I think what you do need to be uh, aware of, though, is that uh, there, you know, there where the boundaries lie. And this might vary from organization to organization. It also varies according to cultural context, right? So for example, um, I, I grew up in India and, and I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's considered perfectly natural, uh, you know, or, or normal uh, to share um, a lot of details about your personal self, you know, with your professional colleagues or, you know, or, or your um, your fellow students and so on. Um, and there's, um, in, in fact, if, if you don't share that, uh, it is considered um, rude, right? But in Australia, where I've been living and working for, for, for nearly three decades now, uh, people do not usually share as much personal information as they as they would in India, at least not until you get to know the other people really, really well, right? So part of what you need to be aware of is, uh, you know, where you, you set that boundary. As you rightly said, you, you still need to be able to build performance, right? Um, to, to drive uh, performance, right? So build build connections, but not, uh, you know, be careful that you, you still remain, uh, to still remain professional. Uh, thanks, Malini. And let's hear from Laurie. Uh, yes, a nice question. Thank you, Rupesh. I think it's healthy to connect on a personal level and um, uh, build relationships. It's, well, I mean, human beings are social creatures, so it's a, a completely natural thing to do. Um, if you're an authentic leader, it's really important that yourself in your personal life resonates with yourself in your professional life, so it's going to have a much better coherence or a much more consistent message, as long as there's good consistency between that personal version of yourself as well as the professional version of yourself. Thanks, Laurie. Um, <clears throat> well, wow, how, how many questions came up today? How many actually do we still have left? So on behalf of the panel, APMG, uh, myself, I'd like to thank you, our viewers, because you are our producers. I'd like to thank you for your excellent questions today. You've done a great job and watch out if your name in the credits will appear uh, if your question was selected. Panel, it's time for your closing remarks. So let me begin with Mart then. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you everyone for these uh, fantastic questions and uh, thank you panelists. Um, great collaboration, uh, uh, really enjoyed it. I'd like to finish with a quote from Hannah Inom who once said, authentic leadership is the full expression of me for the benefit of we. Right, yeah, very good. <laughs> Thanks, Mart. And Thomas, your closing remarks, please. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I feel sorry that it, just, it was just one hour, you know, this topic, uh, could be, uh, could be discussed within the next couple of hours more. So let us know if you, if you would like to hear more for me, uh, what I would like to encourage you at the end is to check out Brené Brown. Yeah, she's, uh, American psychologist and she does a lot of research about uh, vulnerability 
uh, being courage and being an authentic uh, leader. So Brenna Brown, you can Google her. There's a Netflix um, a Netflix episode with, with her as well. So this is my message message to you. Behind, besides all that we we, we spoke about, check what what uh, she speaks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. And let's hear then from Laurie. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Stefan, fellow panelists and listeners, for your great. Uh, questions. I guess the, the message I'd like to leave with is that everybody um, has the potential to be an authentic leader if they can understand themselves and get themselves in a, an environment that uh, resonates with that. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll also add the uh, Albert Einstein quote that uh, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its life thinking it's stupid. So there's such a huge opportunity for, for leaders to not only be authentic to themselves, but to not judge others and to create opportunities um, so that people can be successful. Yeah, good, good one, uh, Laurie. And closing remark from Johan, please. Okay, I'm going to do three quick things. Um, first of all, Mod, I think three or four times talked about purpose. Um, there's a brilliant workbook from Simon Sinek. It's called Find Your Why. It's not the Start With Why book. It's a blue book. I would encourage any manager or leader to go and buy that and work through that with your team, number one. Um, number two, two um, thank you, everybody, for showing up because without you, there wouldn't be a show and uh, we couldn't have shared our opinions. And then lastly, mm. I just want to quickly Very read true. you something. When leaders are willing to prioritize trust over performance, performance uh, almost always follows. However, when leaders have laser focus on performance above all else, the culture inevitably suffers. And that comes from the infinite game from Simon Sinek. All right. Thanks, Laurie. Um, last but not least, Malini your view. Thank you so much for including me in this really, um, uh, you know, wonderful conversation. Um, showing up as an authentic leader uh, is, is not always easy. In fact, um, it, it is actually, it can be downright difficult, especially for those of us, uh, you know, who, who are stepping in to play in, in a playing field that is not level, right? So, so keep at it. Um, I wish you good luck uh, and good courage, and I hope you will create a, a world full of authentic leaders um, going forward. Thanks, Malini. And um, <clears throat> Shanice, wasn't this um, much of an engagement that we had today? <laughs> An absolutely fantastic show. I always enjoy our shows about leadership and being authentic. So this has just been one of the best, I think. So thank you, panel, and thank you to all of our audience who are watching today. Yeah, well, great. Well done, everyone. By the way, <clears throat> over on our website, you can search for answers to more than 1,500 questions in the meantime. It's a comprehensive free resource connecting you with more than 170 experts from around the world. Video isn't your first choice. You can also listen to the audio versions of the shows on your preferred plat podcast platform. Please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Doesn't cost you a thing and really helps new folks discover our content. Coming up on Friday, the 9th of June, one of our favorite topics is uh, coming to level up again, how to become a business relationship manager. We touched on that a bit today. Join us and learn from our panel about the proven importance of relationship management in organizations and how you can make the next step in your career by qualifying for that role. On Monday, the 12th of June, we, have a, we dive a bit deeper into agility and will answer your questions about how to achieve an agile mindset. And on Friday, 16th of June, we will be talking again about how to build a career in the world of cybersecurity and in particular, how to become a NIST cybersecurity professional. Please subscribe to the show and we will send you a personal summary of what's coming up and how you can join us here on the panel and level up your career with APMG. Thanks, everyone. See you on the next show.